Well, hello again, friends. I'm Paul Estabrooks, and today is the third Sunday of Lent in the year 2021. Lent is that period of time in the Christian calendar when we remember the sufferings of Jesus. And so on these Lenten Sundays, I'm sharing with you stories from the persecuted church, or what we often call the suffering church. And yet, in spite of the sufferings I'm sharing, there is always a good news story at the end. And so let me assure you that though there is sadness in the stories I share today, the ending is a happy ending. Today I want to focus on the country of Iran and share with you the year of the significant martyrdoms there, Christian martyrdoms. It was 1994. In addition to these two men, Pastor Heik of Sepian Mare and Pastor Mehdi Dibaj, a third pastor named Tateos Macalian was also martyred for his faith in Jesus Christ, all in that same year, 1994. But the story begins and ends with Mehdi Dibaj, pictured here. Uh, Mehdi was a convert from Islam to Christianity as a very young man, and he became a very significant disciple of Jesus Christ to the point where he wanted to share the gospel everywhere he could, and he became a missionary to neighboring Afghanistan. He spent many years there working with another brother, Christian brother in Afghanistan, who was blind, but a very, very incredible communicator, and who had tremendous impact uh, for the gospel in the country. There's a great story about their sharing together. Uh, the story was shared with me by Christy Wilson, who was one of the few missionaries in Afghanistan years and years ago. And uh, Christy wrote a book called More Precious Than Gold. And in that book, he also tells this story. That Mehdi Dibaj and, and his Afghanistan Christian brother were having supper one night, and there was something going on in their lives that caused their prayer before they ate as they gave thanks for their food to be very extended. They prayed for some time. And while Mehdi's eyes were closed, because Brother Zia, the other brother, was blind anyway, while Mehdi's eyes were closed as they prayed, the cat jumped up off the floor and ate the meat that was on their plates, or on, in the stew, if you will, or whatever it was on the table. When they opened their eyes, the cat was lying on the floor, writhing in anguish because the meat had been poisoned. And the cat took their punishment by eating that meat and saved their lives. And both of those men ended up as Christian martyrs, but it was not yet the right time. And God protected them in miraculous ways until it was God's time. Mehdi Dibaj returned from Afghanistan to Iran, and in the years after uh, his missionary work, he was a very effective communicator of the gospel, and he led 200 Muslims to faith in Jesus Christ. You know when that happens, there's going to be a kickback, and there was a pushback, to the point where Mehdi Dibaj was arrested and put in prison on the charge of apostasy. He spent nine long years in Iran's prison, which he said were the most sweetest years he had with Jesus, who was there in the prison with him. Interesting comments. So two of those years he spent in isolation cell, and the cell was one meter by one meter with no window. Can you imagine the pressures of isolation? Many people go crazy in those kind of conditions, mentally, uh, because Jesus was there with him, he said, it was a very sweet time for him. Uh, in late 1993, uh, things changed, but I do have to tell you that Mehdi Dibaj uh, was married, and after his imprisonment, his wife left him, and they had four children. And Pastor Haik of Sepian Mare, who was the leading pastor, Protestant pastor in the country of Iran, he and his wife Takush took in 
Mehdi Dibaj's four children and raised them as their own while he was in prison. But Mehdi wrote many letters to his sons while he was in prison, which we have because of the Hofsepi and Mehr family's records. And uh, there were incredible things that he wrote to his son about how much he loved the Lord and how he even envied those saints of old who gave their life for Jesus. And he said, I'd be more than willing to do that because I love Jesus so much. In 1993, late 1993, he was actually charged now with the apostasy, which means he left Islam to become a Christian. But that had happened 40 years earlier, and now he's being charged with this. He was uh, went to court. He only uh, represented himself, gave his own testimony, uh, and of course the court found him guilty and therefore sentenced him to execution. Well, this was more than the church in Iran could could handle. It was just an incredible thing, and so they let an outcry go out all over the world. Our dear brother Mehdi Dibaj is going to be executed just because he changed his faith 40 years ago. And leading the charge was Pastor Haik Hosepian Mayer. Just earlier uh, to this time, he had been in Pakistan sharing uh, along with Brother Andrew, who headed the ministry I worked with. Uh, and together they, um, they ministered and Hike told Brother Andrew, when they kill me, and that's what he said, when they kill me, it will not because I was silent. And he refused to be silent when injustice was being done. Hike led the charge of the outcry. Uh, he was an amazing man, absolutely amazing. The more I learn about him, the more incredible this man was in my eyes. When he was just nine years old, his folks divorced and he had to uh, shine shoes on the street to help his mother pay the bills. And since he was nine years old, he learned all kinds of things. He became a jack of all trades, uh, learned just about any kind of thing, a very, very talented man. And as a young man, he was converted to faith in Jesus and therefore went to school to study the Bible and became a pastor. He married Takush, a very strong Christian woman uh, who served alongside him as they planted a new church in a dominantly Muslim part of Iran, even under the era of the Shah. And uh, he became in time not only the leading pastor of the Assemblies of God, the denomination that he was in, but all of the Protestant uh, denominations of the country of Iran. He became a very, very significant leader. And uh, he was talented in so many ways. Besides being a great preacher, he was also a beautiful singer. And in the years when I made prayer tapes for Open Doors, uh, I used to play his singing and here, here's just a little clip of Pastor Hike's singing. Word went around the world about Mehdi Dibaj and the injustice being done against him after 40 years uh, of being sentenced to execution because of so-called apostasy. And the pressures on the government became so significant that on January 16, in 1994, Mehdi Dibaj was suddenly released from prison. It was incredible. There was such a joyful time. The believers sang and thanked God for answers to prayer. And even Time Magazine used that term when they reported it. I read about this in Time Magazine in January 1994. And what Time Magazine titled the little article they had in there was Answer to Prayer. Even Time Magazine realized that this was such an incredible situation. It could only happen in answer to prayer. And there was great joy and rejoicing on the streets of, 
of um, the cities of Iran as they learned that Mehdi Dibaj had been released from prison. They, the government claimed they never did charge him with apostasy and execution, that this was all just a misinformation. Well, it may have been, but Mehdi was free. But that freedom only lasted three days. Three days after Mehdi Dibaj was released from prison, Pastor Hike, who had led the charge for his release, was on his way to the airport to meet some guests coming in, and he disappeared. Did not come home that night, and for three days they knew nothing about him, where he was, anything. Three days later, his son Joseph got a phone call and asked to come to the police station that they had to, pictures for him to see to identify a dead body. And when Joseph went, um, they had already buried the body of Pastor Hike, claiming they didn't know who it was, so they just buried it. And they had pictures taken, and of course, sure enough, it was Pastor Hike. He had so many stab wounds in his body, you could hardly count them all. There's a discrepancy from 23 to 33 uh, actual stab wounds in this man's body that was there when they took these pictures. Takush, Pastor Hike's wife, and their three kids, three boys and a daughter, emigrated to California. And they began a media ministry back to Iran, which goes on till this day, an incredibly great ministry. Um, uh, Christian ministry to the country and in recent years they produced a documentary about their dad the boys made this film about their dad and it was called cry from Iran it's on YouTube you can find it on YouTube as well as many trailers about it uh, but it is really worth watching An Islamic judge condemned to death a zealous Christian convert from Islam, Mehdi Dabaj. His only crime was converting to Christianity. Mehdi Dabaj had already served 10 years in prison. A copy of Dabaj's execution order was leaked out and got into the hands of Haik Hofsepian, the leader of Protestant Christians of Iran. Haik, risking his life, chose to speak out and launch an international campaign for the sentence to be overturned. Hike's campaign was successful, and Dibaj was released only a few days before his execution date. But there was a price to pay. This is the story of one man's fight for human rights and the consequences he paid. Hike loved people, and especially he loved Muslims, and they knew it. به طور کلی در اسلام خروج از اسلام به دین دیگر ارتداد و قتل طرف باشه. And Haik said, if they say that there is no religious freedom in Iran, then I don't mind. But when they claim to have religious freedom, and at the same time, Bring so much hardship and persecution on our people, I cannot stand. And I have to stand for the truth and justice and make this known throughout the world. For them, they were one person. The problem is one country, one country. The government had a great strength and strength in the world. حمایت از جفا دیدگان Haik went out of his innermost being and succeeded not knowing what the result would be but I believe he knew in his heart that often times a life for a life Cry from Iran, a really worthwhile film to watch and understand 
the, the challenges that Christians in Iran faced then and somewhat still face to this day. Well, Mehdi Dibaj, six months later, also disappeared. And they found his dead body in the forest with rope burns around his neck. And he had been hung and executed by a vigilante group who never ever claimed responsibility. But he was a martyr for Jesus Christ as well. Something that he had always been willing to do and to be. So what's the good news out of all of this? Well, first of all, uh, one year later, I was in Iran uh, and I met Pastor Edward. Pastor Edward, pictured here with me, was Hike's brother. And he became the pastor of the church that Hike had, a significant sized church in the capital city. And uh, he told me at this meeting, since my brother was martyred, this church has doubled in attendance and membership in one year. So can you believe that? Normally, the death of, especially the, the death in this way, uh, would have caused people to be afraid and to stay away from this church. But just the opposite happened. Um, so much so that to this day, uh, churches in Iran have been closed if their services were in Farsi. So that church building that Pastor Hike pastored, which was a significant sized building, they had several meetings on Fridays to get everyone in. Uh, that church was closed by the government just a few years ago. Only reason was that they were holding their services in Farsi language, the language of the people. Now, if they had held it in Armenian language, which is the country next door, which was the ethnic background of Hike and Edward, they were from an Armenian family originally, uh, who lived in Iran all their lives, uh, they would have been okay. But to have services in the national language, Farsi, was considered to be more than what the government would allow. And so today, there are no churches open in Iran if they use Farsi language for worship services. But the church has grown incredibly. Just a couple of years ago, my, my teaching buddy, Dr. Jim Cunningham, and I were in Central Asia uh, teaching at a uh, training center uh, for Transworld Radio. Uh, with a group of young Christians and one young lady came up to me and said, have, have you ever heard of Mehdi Dibaj from Iran? And I said, oh yes, I mean, I used to pray for him when he was in prison and then rejoiced when he was finally released on that day in January 16th, only to be so sad to hear for his family's sake when he lost his life in the middle of 1994. The young lady said to me, my name is Freshti and I am one of his daughters. And I was blown away. I was like, you are? And she was at this conference along with her daughter, who was Mehdi Dibaj's granddaughter, Christine. So this is a picture with Freshti and Christine at uh, this training center. Uh, where I got to meet them. And it was there that I found out and was it was validated that Iran has an extremely fast-growing church. Today, uh, even all of the all of the researchers who research church growth around the world, uh, including Operation World, uh, agree that the fastest growing church today, is in the country of Iran, a Muslim theocracy. And yet the church is growing at something like 20% a year in that country. Maybe it's God's blessing on Christians who are willing to give their life for him to see his church grow.